Hey everybody, welcome to the Beauty of Pastel. My name is Bethany. Thank you for coming and visiting my studio. Today, we're going to be painting this gorgeous canyon pathway southwest landscape. Over on my Patreon page, we've been studying canyon and southwest imagery, so I thought I would bring this lesson here to you guys on YouTube. This is about a nine by 12 on sanded paper. It's about 25 minutes long. Make sure you hit that like and subscribe. And if you're interested in looking at more of my Patreon lessons, you can check out the Patreon video index that I have listed in the description below or right here. You can also visit patreon.com forward slash Bethany Fields. Thank you so much for being here. Let's get started. Today we're going to be working on a scene from Paladuro Canyon, of course one of my favorite muses. Um, it's a, just a, a beautiful area near my home. It's very southwest, of course, um, since I live in the southwest, but we have lots of beautiful trees and I love especially the color of the soil. We have very red clay soil and whenever the shadows are cast on it, the shadows are very purple and blue, mainly because, you know, a shadow is the mixture of the sky color with the ground color. And so, you know, blue against red is going to make very purple shadows. So anytime I see a shadow image, of course, on a trail or path like this, I want to take a picture because they're so fun to paint. Right now I'm sketching in the major shapes with my mechanical pencil. I use the mechanical pencil because it's, you know, I don't have to sharpen it if for any reason it breaks off. I'm using a really light touch with the mechanical pencil, looking at the basic shapes of the trees, the path, there's a distant tree line and also the canyon wall um, off in the distance. That's something I really want to push off into, you know, to make it look like it's farther away. And so using very specific color, we're going to work on that today. Right now, I, what I did is I just kind of sketched across the reminder of where the shadow will be. Now, um, I already filled in most of the major shapes with my blue new pastel. You've seen me do that before. And so right now what I'm doing is I'm pushing in that pastel with my rubbing alcohol and the fan brush that I love to use. This is my normal way to, you know, to fill in the shapes, to begin to build the layers, especially in the shadow areas. This is how I create my value map. I use the brush in multiple ways. Right there, you know, I'm kind of pushing it up. Um, I also can flick it more, more delicately using just the very tips of the bristles to help me create that grassy texture. This is how I love to create grass. A lot of times people say, how do you create foregrounds? What do you do with grasses? And you know, when I first started painting, I had difficulty with that too. Everything just seemed so thick and muddy and I felt like I had to add every tiny little blade in. So how do you solve that problem? Well, you, 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 know, you look around at your studio and find a tool that helps you with that texture use that texture and then you don't have to, you don't feel like you have to add in every single blade. Let that alcohol drip down and help you create those grasses. That's just what I did right there. Now the magic of video, it's automatically dry, even though it took about five minutes. I like to, in the initial stages, especially, um, you know, in any kind of tree painting, I like to mirror the, um, the underpainting color. I want to reestablish a very dark base for this tree. And I could, you know, sometimes I put this back in with rubbing alcohol and more new pastel. In this case, I'm wanting to kind of indicate the deep dark branches um, and the base of this is actually a juniper tree using a very dark Terry Ludwig. This is a slightly lighter Terry Ludwig. This is the same concept that I've talked about before. I like to go, you know, dark to light in any kind of, in any, in really any scenario on using pastel. I work dark to light, 
cool to warm and so I'm getting a little bit lighter you can see that that's a lighter value than that very very dark value and now I'm getting a little bit warmer and I'm physically moving up the tree because as you you know as you go up the tree the tree is going to be receiving more light and so I don't necessarily put all of you know all of these colors on top of each other at the base I do like to bridge them though to where um, you know it, it's not just a harsh line of dark blue, medium blue, you know, dark green, warmer green. Um, I like to kind of, you know, almost like painting clouds or sky, how you, you know, you don't want the gradation in the sky, the dark, you know, darkness at the top of the sky and the horizon line below. You don't want stripes. And so you pull the colors as, you know, as you're going through the various layers. And so I am, you know, that's the similar, it's a similar approach to any kind of tree. Unlike some of my recent fall scenes, I decided not to do a really dark, warm underpainting. I wanted to just show you um, how different underpaintings help you achieve a different look. And so I didn't use the acrylic ink on this one. I'm just really going off of this dark blue, you know, alcohol wash with new pastel. Um, this right here are some Terry Ludwig's from the Umbers collection. I've mentioned them, you know, that that specific set before. I really love it for anything to do with fall. And it has a great range of warms and cools in it. Although the values are very, very tight. There's not really very light values in that set. So if you want lighter colors, you know, you're going to have to go a la carte or open stock, whatever you want to call it. Now I'm going to start putting in some of the greens and the grasses. This is a very, very cool Richeson. And I'm starting with the cools and you'll notice that I'm, you know, I'm, I'm putting them in a way that, you know, I'm really looking at the photo here, seeing the different sagey greens that are present within, within these desert grasses. We have lots of sages. We, you know, our grasses aren't um, long, tall, beautiful, lush, uh, you know, meadow grasses. We have cactus and yucca and lots and lots of sages. And those are, you know, we want them, it, we want this to look like the area that we're in. And so using, you know, sometimes you say, oh, well, I don't, you want to use cools in the foreground. Well, in a desert scene, you would because that's the type of plant it is. And so using, um, you, you know, using the blues in this foreground helped me create a darker base to then put these sagey greens on top of. Wanting to establish the pathway just a little bit here, um, you know, really wanting this to be a very loose path because, you know, it is loose. It's not, of course, it's been um, worn by erosion, by horses, by hikers and bikers. So, but there's a lot of, of vegetation that's growing on the edges. And so that's something that I always like to work on is making sure my edges of a path are not exactly straight, like it's been mowed. This is, um, you know, a very natural state park. And so put, pulling some of the path into the vegetation and then of course putting vegetation over the path will help it create a little bit more rough hewn look. This is a darker green. Now I'm, I'm starting to pull in some darker green, very cool green, and once again, it's a cool green, into um, the shadow areas underneath this large tree. So whenever I'm thinking about where the sun is coming from, and if the sun is hovering over at the very right corner, casting the shadow across the path, that's kind of how I've, I'm imagining it. Well, in those areas, you know, where the, you know, the tree is not casting, we're going to pull in warmer colors. And so that's why I'm putting in these bright, warm greens. Now the photograph doesn't necessarily tell that story. Most of the left-hand frame of that, the reference photo is in the sunlight, but I want to increase the drama a little bit. So why not extend that shadow all the way across, solidify that shape a little bit more and allow me to, you know, it, it, it doesn't break up the painting so much. If it was broken up too much into a very light side, you know, half of it is light, half of it is dark. It might not be as compelling. And so I always love to extend shapes extend those shadow lines, especially across a painting.
working a little bit on pushing, a, you know, pushing that distant little spit of land behind this tree back using very, very neutral colors. That's a very, you know, very neutral, cool green, similar to the cool green that I pulled into the front. This is where, you know, I'm wanting to, to create almost a pathway to the back to that mesa that I'm putting in right there. Actually, it's not a mesa, it's a canyon wall. We're actually down below the mesa um, using a very, very cool, cool um, kind of violet blue, Pull, pushing and pulling that in. Instead of, you know, you don't always have to, to underpaint with alcohol, especially if you really want to have soft edges. The alcohol can make things very hard. And so just using my fingers and just pushing that in, um, you know, gave me a good color sense so I can see and think to myself, do you like that color? Is that the right color for that Mesa? I'm kind of letting it sit in my, um, in my head for a, a, a bit while I, I pull that same color. This is the same pastel that I used for that distant down into the shadow, the, you know, to blue the shadows a little bit on this path. I'm also using just a um, vintage Grumbacher pastel. That's one of my favorites for any kind of paths. I, I usually use those pastels a little bit more lin in a linear fashion using the actual tip of it, mostly because I love, um, I love their linear, you know, their linear quality. I also really like those vintage labels and I don't, I don't always want to peel them off. Every other pastel, I think, you know, peel the label off, but those vintage ones, I don't peel the label off just because it's such a beautiful label. And I really like the sketchier nature of, you know, you can see that I'm just kind of scribbling into that pathway. Once again, pulling that, you know, that, um, that sandy, soil color into the vegetation. I'm wanting to start bringing in a little bit of light uh, to create kind of a bridge value between where the cast shadow is from the tree and from where the sunlight is. Now remember, the sun in this piece, where I'm kind of creating it, is in the top right corner, casting across down towards the left corner. Uh, that, to me, you know, creates a very solid shape. It also gives me the opportunity to really pull those shadow values over the path, which is very compelling and um, beautiful. I'm also pulling in some very uh, truer, cool greens, but you know, that's kind of almost a crayon green. Also thinking about connecting it to other greens within that same family and you know, going backwards. I don't wanna isolate a color too much because that can draw the eye away from the focal point. And so when you create an armature within, even within color, it doesn't just have to be the major shapes of your piece that we think about armature we can also think about it with color and what the color is doing and how it leads us around the painting I decided to keep the sound of the pastel um, and me applying the pastel for this video because I, I really wanted you to hear the softness and how that pastel scratches onto this beautiful sanded paper. It's, you know, the, a very um, delicate sound and it's also very unique to pastel. You know, we, I love that scratchy, that scratchy layering on. And when you can hear that, sometimes it helps you to realize exactly, you know, the pressure that I'm using. Of course, different pastel uh, brands, they sound different. You know, Townsend's, at which that's that very beautiful yellow that I used off in that d distant trees are much scratchier because they've got pumice in them. And so they really actually scratch through um, the other layers of pastel. Of course, a lot of this piece is still mostly underpainting. Almost the entire left hand side is, you know, untouched blue new pastel with just tiny hints of color. I'm really working right now on just bringing that warmth, um, slowly, slowly bringing that warmth 
and of course you know in the distant trees if if the light is in that top right corner all of those distant trees would be lit because there there's nothing in their way right now i'm also pulling in some more um, some more of those shadows of course painting anything dappled light it's almost like painting sky holes you have to put in the color and then you cut right you know you cut the light right back in sometimes you know you do that several times to create a realistic effect I put some purple down in the that path and so I also put it back up into that distant canyon wall. I also wanted to brighten a little bit of that how the path curves around off in the, off in the distance. So that's a little brighter value just because the, the values around it almost made it disappear. And so I wanted to brighten that up just so you could see the distant and how it recedes. Okay, so now I'm working um, still even developing more of the vegetation. You know, whenever you have any type of light that hits a pathway, you also have to think about, okay, well, if there's a, you know, dappled light hitting this path, then the vegetation around it would also be brighter. And so you can't just have a spot of you know, brightness in a path. Of course, especially if it's next to a ton of grasses and foliage, if there aren't a, a, just a few hints of that foliage being a little bit brighter. Um, that's a great way to, to you know, indicate the presence of light is in those tiny details and making sure that you know, where the light pattern is makes sense within your landscape. This is a great American that I'm using to bring in some vibrancy. This is a really soft pastel and I'm wanting, you know, I love the color of it. Um, and you can even hear the different textures. You know, this is a tapping, tapping almost, um, almost hitting the pastel on the paper instead of that gentle scumbling or flicking. I want there to be little flower heads. Of course, the you know, majority of that left-hand side, especially as it sweeps around in the photograph, are dried seed heads. I probably am not going to be painting all of those, but I do want there to be a, you know, some flowers in this landscape. And so using that brighter Great American um, and kind of tapping it onto the, onto the grasses in specific areas help you with that. This is a Terry Ludwig green. That, that's that green that I love so much. It just really is the perfect green for adding light at least to me, especially on the edges of where a shadow might be. You know, it's, it's, it's not the core shadow, it's the, you know, it's the edge of the shadow. It's right where the light is about to hit. And so it's a bridge value. Also putting it a little bit off into the distance, that same green, and even working it a little bit up into that tree to help bring, you know, just to make sure that there's a color harmony throughout the scene. Okay, let's work a little bit on the sky. I'm adding a really, you know, very similar value, especially that very first one that I put on into the high part of the sky. And then I'm carving in a lighter. This is a um, very, that's I think from the True Lights collection of Terry Ludwig. Um, really just kind of playing with this. I don't want to create a really, really um, blue, blue sky. I want it to be a calmer, quieter, glowier feel, if that's even a word. And so pulling in a darkness at the top and then working in some lighter colors, kind of re-carving that distant canyon wall as well. Of course, in the canyon, it's not a gentle slope. There are kind of steps to wall, you know, the canyon walls. And so making sure those are um, in that in that what looks like a mountain makes it look more like Paladuro Canyon than just having a gentle rolling mountain that's a completely different landscape. 
putting in that darker um, uh, pastel at the top and then working in a warmer golden almost creamy color at the at the base of that of you know that where the sky meets the canyon wall really helps you you know have a glow to your piece I also wanted to mimic and mirror the colors in the pathway and so you can see how creamy the lights are creamy white the lights are in that path and then also how you know the, that color temperature is similar and so it, it makes it cohesive even though I'm using, you know, a lot of carving in the sky, I want that to be pretty soft. That's how I'm pushing, uh, I'm making that distance seem greater than in the photograph. This is a really, really bright Townsend thin line. I love this. Um, this is almost a, a more vibrant version of that, those really yellow greens that I love for Terry Ludwig. Of course, this is a different brand, but the, um, this one is, you know, I think all of the Townsends especially are very, very, they have a high chroma. They're very powerful pastels in color. Sometimes so hard, um, so, so bright, they are hard to photograph because they're just, you know, incredibly strong um, pigments. Really just wanting to, um, you know, really playing with detail here. This is, this is when the painting kind of starts to slow down a little bit, at least for me. And, you know, the, the adjustments are very incremental. I'm stepping back a lot. Of course, some, you, you know, you don't see that in this video because a lot of that, you know, that, that time when I'm just standing, like now, um, I edit out. But I want you to know that, you know, th these aren't, you know, you know, these paintings that I paint for you are not always as quick as they seem here on video. I might edit out 30 minutes of me standing, <laughs> standing, trying to figure out what the painting needs. And so that's, you know, what's different about a video demonstration versus a workshop, um, you know, demonstration, for instance. You know, those are quite a bit different than a video uh, demonstration. You know, make sure you take time if you, if you really love to learn and you have opportunities for workshops in your area, go to them. Um, if you want me to come to your area, you can, you know, contact me and say, well, Bethany, we want you to come because I'm able to, to, to teach and show you so much more in person, especially those moments of, okay, now what? Or if a painting has a problem or, you know, how to fix something during the painting process, a lot of that or the decisions that I've made are not in a video for most um, videos that you're going to watch online. I'm fine tuning the, the pathway even more. I'm adding a little bit of, of um, warm pink to the shadows. I have some of that warm pink Kind of neutrally pink off in the distant uh, little you know uh, field so i'm wanting to pull a little bit of that color into into the pathway as well i'm also going to add some deeper shadows with some ultramarine blues especially you know right next to the tree um, uh, as it's as it's going across from left to right across the pathway you'll see me do that in a second and this is just you know I want I just want there to be a little bit of more vibrancy and just interest in this area and so using these analogous colors next to each other it's not so bright or such a different color that it really um, creates you know too much of a contrast of color but it's you know, different enough that it creates interest. And we always want interest in our shadows, especially because when using photo references, so much of the shadow is flattened. And so we have to create that interest. And shadows aren't just dark. There are, there are you know, it, it's in the dark family. But in that dark family of a shadow, there are colors. And so, you know, adding, you know, I just added a tiny, tiny little bit of ultramarine. And I, you know, I'm not tapping it off because I don't like it. 
um, I'm using the brush to soften the edge slightly to, you know, to reveal a little bit of the underlaying color, but then to keep some of that, um, that ultramarine as well. So, you know, I'm not using the brush because I don't like it. I'm using it as a tool to soften. We don't always just have to use our fingers or a you know, piece of pipe foam. We can use brushes um, to you know, very um, delicately remove some pastel. I'm finalizing and tweaking a little bit of that distant canyon wall. I didn't love the shape of um, just, you know, the edges of it. And so, you know, I put some more purpley, purpley blues back up in there and then also I'm re-carving in some of that canyon wall. Softening that edge a little bit and then of course my you know one of my favorite steps is putting on this black artist tape that I can so I can really just see How the values are interacting with each other that dark adding that black dark value really makes colors just pop and sing You can imagine how it looks framed um, And it you know takes away all of the messy edges that sometimes can detract from the piece I'm really happy. I love how this piece came together. I especially love how the pathway and the distant mesa or canyon wall really just bring some beauty and color to this, um, this scene that otherwise is, you know, pretty, um, pretty just regular. Um, not a lot of color going on in that photo reference. I hope this frees you to bring color to your references and gives you some permission to just have fun and play with your pastels. Thank you guys so much. I will see you around soon.